a deal to surrender and leave. Over the last week, thousands of opposition fighters and civilians have left Douma to revolt-held areas in northern Syria. About 20,000 people have gone to the northern province of Idlib. For many, the pain of defeat is overwhelming. Those on the opposite side of the war celebrated the evacuations. The last rebel stronghold in eastern Ghouta, now under government control, is covered in rubble. All the entrances are closed. There's mines inside. I can't go in. I've been warned not to go anywhere. You can see the wires and other troubling things. They told me to wait a couple of days until the street is cleared. Evacuations out of Douma are a major victory for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and his ally, Russia. Many of the city's buildings and roads have been destroyed. There have been weeks of intense bombings. The takeover may have been driven by an apparent chemical attack in Douma. About 40 people were killed. Hundreds were treated in hospitals. The Syrian government says it had nothing to do with it while the Russians deny such an attack even happened. However, Western powers say the Assad regime was to blame, and some, including the U.S., are considering a military response. Under the evacuation deal, Russian military police are now patrolling the streets, a city in transition as the Syrian government keeps gaining ground. Katia lopez Odoyan, Al Jazeera. I'm sure that you've heard of the uh, the uh, uh, gas attacks in Syria by now, the recent gas attacks in Syria. And I just wanted to take a second to um, sort of uh, uh, process number one, why the alt-right is is trying to become the leaders of the of the anti-war movement. And number two, where I think uh, people of, of my uh, philosophical political position should should side in the debate, um, which to viewers of the channel that part will probably be more obvious, but that's okay. We'll we'll get around to that. So what what's important to me here is the idea that the alt right never does anything at face value, but they want to be taken at face value so that they can make political they can make uh, political gains based on the inference of what they what what they sh should mean by what they say but they don't mean what they say um, if you look very closely at the conversation online about the Syrian gas attacks and generally about military intervention in the Middle East specifically because you know um, for example, uh, are, are, they're not libertarians. Even though a lot of them came from the Ron Paul anti-war libertarian um, uh, political movement, if they've been around long enough, the 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 fascists uh, within the alt right are not pacifists. Um, they're supposedly isolationist, but they have a pan-European uh, 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 bent to their rhetoric that would imply that they are not um, that they are not in fact isolationists that they that they're more of a mind to um, more interested in using defensive political force and excuse me a lot of their white liberation narrative is is related to sort of um, you know, uh, uh, liberating white people overseas by force. So don't get the impression that a bunch of people who think Hitler was a reasonable guy are uh, truly anti-war. What they do want is for the largely Jewish American uh, neoconservatives uh, to be discredited and uh, 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 disavowed and purged um, from the Republican Party and to be uh, hyper-stigmatized in the American consciousness. So what they do is they notice that uh, post-Bush, post-Obama, there is massive amounts of war fatigue, especially for uh, military campaigns in the Middle East. So the, the alt-right seizes on this and goes, well, you know, look, uh, 
uh, look at Israel's position in this this uh, conflict, look at Israel's uh, position in this particular incident, and look at who the neoconservatives are, who they are. Um, they call this naming the Jew. And what they do is, um, they then present themselves as anti-war, and they like really obviously go around uh, 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 agitating leftists and, and claiming that uh, that we're not anti-war enough because we're not siding with them on their no more Jew wars platform. So, you know, I'm not going to, I don't make bedfellows with the alt-right. There is no issue in which I will, there is no issue in which I'll, I will organize with uh, the alt-right because they don't do what I do for the reasons that I do it. They don't give a fuck about war. They give a fuck about Jews, Jewish Americans, Israel, Israelis, um, and their 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 relationship with Israel is is at at the very least uh, uh, extremely dissonant, because their relationship with Israel as an imperial force is that they are the sort of stormtroopers of the Jewish international elite, um, and, but also they fetishize Israel's bigotry. Not Israel, not not every person in Israel is a bigot, but I'm talking about the bigoted, uh, ethno-state style uh, policy um, platform uh, in order to get in order to get mainstream acceptance for um, for their anti-Israel, anti-neocon agenda. I am not a fan of neoconservatives. I don't. I wasn't a fan of their. I wasn't a fan of their campaigns in uh, the the Bush era. I'm not a fan of the lingering uh, pieces of that campaign playing out during the Obama administration. Um, I'm not a big fan of their uh, plan to control the Middle East. Um, but I recognize that none of those things have anything to do with Judaism. As as a as a philosophy, they have nothing to do with Jewish people as a group, Jewish people as a identity. Um, the, the 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 number one uh, falsehood in the alt right is that, or at least like the mechanism of their number one lie is to basically the the to uh, co-opt whatever capitalists are doing wrong. And then point to Jewish capitalists, in this case neoconservatives, people who are looking out for capitalist interest, just make sure they're Jewish. And if you just sort of find enough little pockets where through uh, uh, the, the mechanisms of capitalism, uh, Jewish people have become incidentally influential, um, you just sort of weave the narrative of... Um, and again, again, it has a lot to do with using capitalism and white capitalists uh, 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 in particular. It's a way to take the focus off the system that has benefited white Anglo people. That's been uh, 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 imposed on mostly non-white people where where we where we live as an underclass. So. It's really not incidental. It really is just a deflection tactic so we don't have a talk about white male capitalists and what they do. So they go, look, you know, these five Jewish people are bankers. These 10 Jewish people are in the oil industry. These 20 Jewish people are in um, the neoconservative political movement and they want to empower Israel. Even if these people are Zionists behind closed doors, it does not mean that the Jews want to go to war in Syria. It does not mean that the fucking Jews don't, that the, that the Jews want to do anything. Because just like any other group of people, there there is no, um, there's no conspiracy. There's no Jewish plan. You know, that, that sort of leads back to all their talking points. So yeah, don't fucking jump on board with alt-riders because they claim to be holding the banner of pacifism or the claim to, that they're the new vanguard of the anti-war movement. They don't give a fuck about anything like that. They want Trump. Several of them have said that they want Trump to declare martial law and and um, become a, a proper dictator like um, the Filipino uh, 
President Duterte said, don't, don't take them at their, you want war, you want killing? Yes, they do. They want war, they want killing, they want genocide. And the funny thing is that they've co-opted, they've co-opted Syrian President Bashar al-Assad as white. He's not even really that fair-skinned. He's not European, and they're 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 back on their bullshit about um, oh you know th thousands of years ago they cheddar manned they cheddar manned Bashar Bashar al Assad to say that oh well you know uh, his descendants twenty thousand years ago were white so you know it doesn't matter if he's a fundamentalist Muslim it doesn't matter if he's an extreme uh, uh, dictator of a, of, an, of, a, of a Muslim country. You know, Bashar al-Assad is the rightful ruler because he's, you know, they paper bag test everything. They paper bag test Bashar al-Assad and looked at the people that he's fighting against and looked at him and decided that he's the lightest person in the room, so he's the white guy, so he's the person that should be in charge. That's the other component of it is don't fight for Jews and Bashar al-Assad is white enough or whiter than the, the rebels that are fighting against him. Um, so yeah, of course he's gonna be a little bit he's gonna be a little bit more Eurocentric looking because he's a he's a um, he's a Western backed dictator and they're usually gonna take the side of the whitest group they can find um, to to identify with. So the other piece that I'm gonna add very briefly is okay, so what excuse me what side does the red and black flag land on? And that's already pretty clear. Um, in Syria right now, you have the Rojava uh, 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 anti-fascist rebellion. Uh, you have you have uh, anti-fascist uh, brothers and sisters um, fighting to you know to to liberate themselves and to liberate the people. So you know what's why uh, you know if we're looking at all the sides in Syria, there is Bashar al-Assad and his regime. Fuck them. There are the rebels themselves, which yeah, you can side with rebels, but make sure that they're they're the right rebels. Don't don't side with, or I, at least I wouldn't. I can't side with ISIS, even if they're fighting to uh, they're fighting against Assad. What they what ISIS uh, uh, implements after they beat Assad would be as bad, if not worse, than what came before, and as sort of brutally reactionary. So there's no point to backing ISIS just because they're going against the West and going against America. So fuck those guys too. You know, be selective about which rebels. But I can tell you absolutely that you don't have to vet defending the civilians who are under attack and are being slaughtered um, by Bashar al-Assad. Uh, you know, and you don't need to back Donald Trump to do that.